One of the uses of 3ds Max is for compositing 3D objects into live footage or a still photograph. Over the years, animators have used a variety of methods for lining up a virtual camera with the point of view and position of a real camera. There are several software packages available that provide 3D motion tracking, but that may be too much if all you want to do is place an object into a still image background. One feature available in 3ds Max is called Perspective Match. This is a utility that makes it simple to match the perspective from a real-world camera. This makes it easier to place objects in your scene and have them fit properly into the background image. Let's see how this works. The scene we're using looks very simple. However, it is built to match the dimensions of the background. The first thing we need to do is configure the viewport so that we can see the image we want to match our camera to as the background. From the camera drop down menu, enable the show save frame option for the camera viewport. Now let's set the background. In the camera one viewport, select view style, viewport background, environment background. Next, enlarge the viewport by clicking the Maximize Viewport toggle in the lower right of the interface. This will give us a larger image to work with. In the Command Panel, select the Utilities tab, then click Perspective Match to expand the options. In the Perspective Match rollout, Vanishing Lines group, click Show Vanishing Lines. This makes the vanishing lines visible in the Camera 1 viewport. In the Vanishing Lines group, you have four options for alignment. We are going to use the XYZ Alignment option. This will allow us to align our camera in all three axes. In the viewport, you'll see three sets of lines. Red representing the X axis, green representing the Y axis, and blue representing the Z axis. To adjust the camera, Drag the ends of each line to line up with the background image. Let's start with the y-axis. If you're having a problem seeing the background, press G on the keyboard to turn off the grid. Starting with the left green line, click and drag the endpoint furthest to the left, and align it with the bottom of the wall on the left side of the image. Take the grip at the other end of the line and drag it to the base of the wall further into the image. Now let's do the same for the line on the other side. Click and drag the left grip along the base of the right wall, representing a point where the floor meets the wall towards the back of the image. Click and drag the opposite grip and align it to the bottom of the wall where the floor meets the wall towards the front of the image. This sets the y-axis for the perspective match. Now let's work with the x-axis. The line representing the lower x-axis can be left alone because it is already aligned with the horizontal brick in the wall. The upper x-axis we can line up with a pipe running across from one building to the other. Click the right grip on the upper x-axis line and drag it to line up with the bottom right of the large pipe running across the screen towards the top. Do the same for the left grip, only move it towards the left side of the pipe. Now we need to adjust the z-axis. Adjust the two vertical z-axis lines, the blue lines, by matching the left line up with the left side of the door near the camera on the left side of the image. Once you've lined up the left z-axis line, move to the right one. You can adjust this line using the corner of the wall on the right side of the image. Once you line up all three axes, you should see the perspective of the image change to match those three axes. If not, click and drag the upper x-axis grip just slightly and move it into place. Once the perspective is matched, now we need to move the camera to the correct location. 
There are several ways of moving the camera into the right position. One way is to use the horizontal, vertical, and distance adjustments available in the camera adjustments group. By utilizing the horizontal, you can click and drag to change the camera position relative to the x-axis. The vertical option moves the camera relative to the z-axis, and the distance moves the camera relative to the y-axis. Obtaining fine adjustments this way could take a little bit of time, but they can be very accurate. Another way is to use the pan and dolly tools in the camera view navigation toolbar at the lower right of the interface. Adjusting the camera using the camera adjustment options works very well, although it can take a little bit of time. Now, depending on exactly where you place the endpoints of each vanishing line will depend on where you start when you are adjusting your camera. So your view may look different than mine. Start out by adjusting the distance. Increase the value in order to zoom the camera into the subject. If you need to zoom the camera out from the subject, decrease the value by dragging down. Then, edit the vertical value by dragging the vertical spinner up or down, depending on which direction you need to move the camera. Dragging the spinner up will move the camera up and the view down. To work the horizontal value, you drag up to move the camera to the right and drag down to move the camera to the left. By using a combination of these options, you will be able to position the camera to successfully match the 3D objects to the background. Take some time and use the three adjustments to line up the background with the 3D objects in the scene. Work the process of aligning the camera as an iterative procedure, using distance first, then vertical, then horizontal. Continue that process until your camera is aligned. Once the camera is aligned, you can tweak the position of objects in your scene. For example, the post and the torus do not exactly line up with the yellow post in the scene. If we select the post and the torus, then use the Select and Move tool, we can position the objects in the scene from the camera's point of view. Carefully select the Y axis on the Move Gizmo and drag the objects towards the camera until they line up with the post. Now we have both our camera and our objects lined up, and we're ready to apply matte shadow materials and set up our rendering for compositing.